Father, bless you for life you've given to us. Um, thank you for it's by your mercies that we are not consumed. And thank you for your word. Thank you for our brethren who have been standing in the gap all these years. Some have been there since 2013 and some have been since 2012, unfailingly. Even right now in the West, it's so cold. Your children have got up to take their duty posts to pray. Father, we pray, Lord, that all the prayers offered on our behalf will be answered by you as we know that you answer our prayers. Thank you for their lives and thank you for all of us. Bless us this morning through your word. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord has been helping us to look at the Lord's prayer. And the last bit of it is where we are in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and then verse 13. And the Bible says there, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, thy power and thy glory forever and ever. Amen. Such a powerful prayer. Such a powerful prayer that encompasses almost everything of our want, of our need, of anything we could ask or imagine in just a few verses of the scriptures. And today we are looking at the last bit of it. And it says, and deliver us and lead us not into, into temptation. We've looked at that last week Sunday. But deliver us from evil. This is Yeshua himself praying and asking that we be delivered from evil. And brethren, just look at this sentence. He himself that created the heaven and the earth. He knows what is in the earth. He knows nature more than we do. He knows Satan. He knows the world. He knows men more than we do. He didn't want us to be presumptuous. He knows that we are just men, men. He knows the frailty of our being. He knows where we stand. And he said it is quite very vital that when we are praying, we should ask that the Lord will deliver us from evil. He himself, because all power belongs to him. Brethren, this is not a prayer that anyone will oh, pretend as if he doesn't need it. It's not, it's not a matter of being whatever you are in the Lord or in the church or you think. Brethren, there's no pride around this one. Yeshua Hamashiach himself said, we should pray that he will deliver us. It means all power belongs to him. It means what we can imagine he knows. Areas we don't see he knows. He knows all the ammunitions and powers of Satan amassed against us, which we don't know. Brethren, there is, how much can we do by ourselves? How much muscles can we flex in one go? How much shouting can you do? How much trying to be brash or, you know, do it? How much can you go with principalities and powers? You know what the Bible says? That we do not fight against flesh and blood. It's when our finite mind is telling us that we are fighting flesh and blood. That's when we make the mistake. The Bible says, but rather we are fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, wickedness in high places. Brethren, can you imagine? These are all names given to principalities and each of them represents how wicked they are. Principalities, it that means that they are the top. There's nothing you can do against that boss, against that tyrant. There's nothing you can do against that wicked one. Go the principality. In every area, they are on top of you. When it comes, anything, the promotion or the nest is in their hand. The pen is in their hand to just write one thing and you are condemned. Principalities, they are way, way, way on top. Rulers all over around the world. All they need is to say one thing and before they finish, it's been carried out. All they need is to give one command of war and it has started. All they need is to imprison someone, is already cut up someone. It, their principalities, their words are the things that matters. Brethren, they're in existence at every level. At top level, international level, national level, local level, family level, friendship level, at work level. There are principalities. 
You know, when the Bible says that the Lord should deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men who had no faith. Brethren, is a prayer we will have to pray every day. These are principalities. The Bible also called them powers. They are powers. They have that power. I mean they have the power. What it takes to destroy the world in one day. They have the power. When it comes to nuclear weapons, they have it. When it comes to biological weapons, they have it. When it comes to, look, they own the organization, they do. When it comes to, they know who to, they do. When it comes that they, the, they have powers. You know, they, they, they boast about it. They talk about it. You watch them destroy lives because of their powers at every level. In because they have pa powers may not just be physical powers. It may be the power to move things. It may be power of whom you know. It may even be power is not as small as a prefect in the class. It may be power as much as a teacher in school. It may be power as much as, much as a manager in the office. It may be power as much as, you know, an older person. So it ranges as long as that person has a higher power, is dominating, is domineering, and has an authority over you. They can go in the land. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world. That one is at another level. Rulers of darkness. Everything about them is dark. All the things they are thinking is dark. The Bible says that even to say the things they do in secret, it will shock you. Those that drink the blood of others, the cannibals, the barbarians, they are all there in the physical, in the spiritual. They are also there in witchcraft. They are also there in necromancy. They are also there in destroying people. They are also there worshipping. You know, some people are so proud to call themselves witches and the things they can do and how they can pride and how they can suck blood and all those things. But these is not them as human beings. These are wickedness in high places. Wickedness in high places. They are all over in covens and everything. All they are doing is enchanting. They go to graves and they bring up people. They cause accidents. They cause people. They put spells on people. All those things are there. The least brethren is not something anyone being a Christian who says, oh, it doesn't matter. The Lord says here, but deliver us from evil. This is the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. They rule the darkness of this world. They bring in things that ought not to be. Evil inventors, that's what the Bible called them. Evil inventors, whether it is things people will watch and then their mind goes off, they invent them. Whether it is horror films, they invent them. Whether it's cancerous creams, they invent them. Whether it's cancerous food, they invent them. Whether it is um, food, you know, sometimes it, it last two years, it was discovered in the market that some rice were made of rubber, plastic. Can you imagine? Poly, you know, a poly, a poly things and the poly, all those things, they would cause cancer. Someone sat down, manufactured it, pushed it into the, into the market so that people can eat. Brethren, all these kind of things, they don't care. They don't, they climb on orders. Rulers of darkness. Everything is dark. Their heart is dark. Everything, they're thinking dark. Brethren, the Bible says, deliver us. Brethren, we need to understand the world we're living in. That's why when you're born again, glorify Elohim. It means that he separated us and brought us out. Let's see it. And when the Bible says in the book of um, 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 in the book of um, Luke chapter 1, from verse 74, in verse 71 and also 74, he, the Bible says there that he will grant us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. We've been delivered. Brethren, when we are born again, that's why we don't take it for granted. You don't joke with your Christian life. You don't go mingling again with the things of darkness. Because if you know what the Lord has wrought for us, brethren, you will ever be grateful. That's why you don't go back again into sin. Allow the flesh to overtake you and think it can go. No, if you ever allow flesh to come back in, if you ever allow sin to come back in, you've given Satan a right of way. And then the Lord has delivered us from them. And in verse 13 and verse 17 of Daniel chapter 3, 
If so, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery fire and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Can you imagine what we ask the Lord to deliver us? This one is physical fire that a human being put up seven more stronger times. When he says, oh, can you bow to my idol? A lot of us are going through some real difficult situations in life because they refuse to compromise, because they refuse to bow to idol, because they refuse to go, you know, and, and, and give up their Christian faith. So a lot of soul, a lot of people have lost their job because they preached the gospel, because they prayed for people, because they stood for righteousness. A lot of people have lost their spouses because they took the way of righteousness. A lot of people are being mocked. Some sisters are today not having anybody or brothers they are living with or husband or spouses because they refuse to compromise or to defile their bodies. Some students have failed exams because they refuse to join the wrong group. They refuse to compromise their faith. They stood so strong. A lot of people have been mocked. The Bible called it in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, cruel mockings cruel cruelty they've gone through mockings because of their christian faith they didn't want to bow compromise or look like the world mm -hmm. brethren stand where you are don't be afraid of being you know looking like you know some people don't want persecutions these days they don't want persecution but the bible said that those that will live godly in christ yeshua shall suffer persecution when you don't look like them, they will come to you. Oh, why don't you put on this? Oh, why are you dressing this way? Oh, why are you talking this way? Why are you so calm? Why are you so quiet? Can't you see? Don't compromise your Christian life. Oh, you're single. Why don't you go and then at least, no, no, no. Don't defile your body. Oh, you can't. Oh, you can jump from one man to the other, from one woman to the other. Don't defile yourself. Stand strong in him. Keep your house, which is the temple of the living Elohim. Keep it holy, pure and chaste. Some people, oh, you need to get into this business. That's where the money is. And then it doesn't really matter. When you get the money, you pay your tithes. Never compromise to for, a, for the kind of money that is for the potter's field. Don't bring it into the house of the Lord. Brethren, these are the things it comes so sore. Sometimes it will be rejection by friends. Sometimes it will be rejection by family. Sometimes it will be rejection on all those things. And sometimes what we come after it is like a fiery finance. Fiery. A lot of people have lost their livelihood because of this. Some people have lost their families. We, we, we all sing this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Do you know the story behind it? If you read the story behind it, it was an Indian man who gave his life to the Lord. And because of that, the idolaters and all, they came close to him and said to him, what are you saying? Have you joined these people? He says, yes, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. He could see the fairy furnace. In front of him, they said, okay, we're going to kill you. He says, no problem about that. I have decided to follow Jesus. They brought his wife, the children in front of him and said, if you don't denounce Jesus, we will kill your, your, your children. He says, that's fine. They slaughtered his children. In his, he says, if no one joins me, still I will follow. They brought his wife, slaughtered his wife. And then everything he had, all went says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. The when they finally told him, we will kill you, he says, the world behind me, the cross before me. And it was that song, by the grace of Elohim, those that killed him got born again through that song, through the, those words. And today we sing it. You see, the fire in front of you may be kindled one, twice, thrice, and up to seven times. Be strong. Don't deny Elohim for anything. Hallelujah. Be strong in the might. There is a lot of compromises out there. But the Bible says that we should pray that the Lord will deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from evil. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Who deliver us, delivered us from so great a death. Brethren, it could be death in sickness. 
coming. All diagnosis is all red, red, red. Every day was coming in in the post is red letter. You need to come in now. We saw this one. We didn't see this. You need to start chemotherapy. Or oh, the knee had to be chopped off. Or oh, one of the kidneys have to go. Or oh, the brain is, there is tumor. Or oh, the heart is, all those things may be coming in. On and on and on and on and on. Just ask the Lord to deliver you from evil. Deliver you from the death. The Bible says there, who delivered us from so great a death? And Lord deliver. Amen. He still delivers. That's one key thing. That's the blessed assurance. You know, when all those things come, sing up that song. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hair of salvation. Purchased of blood. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. And that's your story. Amen. That's your story. Sing that story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising him all day long. It doesn't matter what it is. He still doth be deliver, brethren. He's still delivering. The Bible says there, in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Amen. He's still doing it. And we have the trust. We have the hope that through that water, Master, that tempest is raging, that billows are tossing by. Brethren, when the billows are tossing by, when the rage winds are raging, when you are in the midst of the ocean and sea, and the dry land is 4,000 kilometers away from you, and the deep and the darkness of the sea is, remember that the sea and the waves shall obey his will. And tell them to be peace, be still. Whether they storm or whatever it is, or whether the demons or whatever they may be, the master of the ocean is in the boat. Amen. Remember, he now lives in us. Hallelujah. That's the great confidence. He lives in us. Then if he lives, no water can swallow that sheep where lies the master of ocean and earth and sky? They all shall sweetly obey his will. Peace, peace, be still. Sing it out loud. Hum it out loud. Let Satan and the world and elements of nature know that the Father will surely deliver. Amen. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. That's a prayer every day. Father, deliver me from this present evil world according to the will of our Elohim and our Father. According to the will of Yahweh, it is his will that we be delivered. You be delivered. Don't take it for granted. Don't jump out of the house without asking the Lord to deliver you from evil. Don't go into that business without asking the Lord to deliver you from evil. Don't jump into that conclusion, into that anything you are doing, that friendship, that relationship, that community, or even in choices of houses or choices of cars, whatever we are doing, do not jump in without accent. The Bible says here to deliver that he might deliver us from this present evil world. There's a lot of things to entice us out there. They look so rosy. They look good in themselves. That's what is out there. The Lord will deliver us. You know, sometimes you go to the market to look for a decent dress to wear. You don't even find any. Summer will soon come now and it looks like everything in the market is like rag. Turn here, turn there, open there, open there. No, brethren. And when you go in, that's the only thing. What do you do? Some people say, oh, that's the only thing I saw in the market. Don't ever. The world has turned to the left. Don't join them. Don't follow them. The Bible says, deliver us from this present evil world. Their thoughts, their imaginations, the way they do things. It's nothing. Before you know it, now a new drink is coming out. Present evil. People are drinking to their death. Before you know it now, new styles, new things, and bad examples, and even the system. Some, so, some systems are so corrupt that it doesn't matter what you do. If you're in that system, you will do the wrong thing. We pray that the Lord will deliver us. Ab initio from ever. There's no need trying to make wrong right. 
when actually if the foundation is wrong, everything about it is wrong and is leading to wrong, just ask the Lord to help you and deliver you. The job may look good. The job may look enticing. It may have a higher pay, but if it will compromise your Christian faith, don't go for it. That marriage may look okay. That man handsome, that lady very beautiful, but you are going into the house of Satan. Don't go into it. That business may have a lot of money, more, more, more money. If you get into there, but it will take you away from your consecration and what you're going to do. Don't go into it, brethren. Remember the earlier in this prayer, it says, and give us this day our daily bread. The Lord is able to keep you. He's able to lead us. He's able to shield us, brethren, from every and every one of them. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 35 the bible says there and say ye save us O god of our salvation and gather us together and deliver us from the hidden that he we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory to in thy praise amen deliver us from the hidden the hidden that do not know elohim they don't know God. They don't know anything about him. The Bible says because they refused to acknowledge him. In fact, in Romans chapter 1, he gave them over to a reprobate heart to do such things. The hidden, then we pray that the Lord will deliver us from the hidden. And brethren, these days, we don't even, when we see the hidden frontally, we will avoid them. But their practices the idolatry. Do you know that what the heathens are known for is idolatry? And anything can become an idol to you. When you worship an idol of any sort, maybe your child is your idol, your beauty is your idol, your money is your idol, your position is your idol, your class in life is your idol, your color is your idol, your education is your idol, whatever you have is your idol, you are going the hidden way. And the Bible says that the Lord will deliver us from the hidden. Who are the hidden? They have no knowledge of him. They have absolutely. Brethren, until you meet those who have no knowledge of him, you will be grateful for your salvation. You will be so grateful what the Lord has done to us. Brethren, they don't have the conscience. You are talking, they are looking at you. They can just do anything without even knowing that this is not right. Without even knowing what is good and bad. And they are walking like dead men walking. They are just walking like trees. And they are living their life that way. You talk about kindness, they have no clue what kindness is all about. They said, what? What does kindness? What is kindness? What does it feel like? You talk about mercy, it's so strange to them. They said, what does that mean? So to them, their heart is, and you keep imagining. Brethren, when you come back, you pray. You talk about patience. You talk about goodness. And then the worst of it, love. No, everything is blank. They are just happy to do anything with no conscience. Brethren, you come back and you kneel down and you thank God for salvation. Salvation is beautiful. The nature of Elohim. Best life ever. Best life ever. The life of joy. The life of peace. The life of kindness. The life of meekness. The life of forgiveness. The life of helping others. Brethren, can you imagine what a gracious life we are living in? And this is where he wants us. The Bible says to deliver us from the hidden who do not know him. A lot of people are, are, across the world have been beheaded because of their faith. Why? The hidden don't know what they are doing. And they can't stand it. A lot have been imprisoned. A lot have been killed. I was reading yesterday about a man who was burnt in, um, burnt in fire by, the, uh, by those who do not know the Lord. Him and his family, two boys, everything, they just struck the match. And then they got burnt in their car for the sake of Elohim, the hidden who do not know the Lord. You can imagine that. Brethren, let's pray that the Lord every morning will deliver us from the hidden who do not know him. First Samuel chapter 12. And verse 10, the Bible says, And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balim and Ashtoreth. But now deliver us out of the hands of the enemies and we shall serve thee. There are our enemies. Brethren, even if you've backslided, even if you've gone the wrong way, maybe you don't know or in ignorance 
Oh, you know it and you went to it. Ask the Lord today, he will deliver. Amen. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He's Elohim. He allows the sun both to the righteous and to the unrighteous. He still gives life. Hallelujah. Yesterday was my birthday. Who gave me that life? It's only him out of his mercy gave that life. It's not of him that wills or him that runs. It's him that's still showing mercy to all of us. He will deliver even if you've come into. What else can we pray that he will deliver us from the assurance of life? In the book of, in all Old Testament, one of the greatest people that really perpetrated wickedness and disturbed the Israelites were the Assyrians. There were so much. If you just keep reading in the book of Second Chronicles, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Micah, all is Assyrian, Assyrian. Let's look Second Kings 18.13. Neither did Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. And this city... Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, look at them, telling the children of Israel, don't allow Hezekiah to make you trust in the Lord. The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hands of the king of Assyria. Amen. The Assyrians tormented the children of Israel all through the Old Testament, during the time of the kings and during the time of in your life. Anywhere you go, the Assyrian is in your life. In the book of Micah, they are there. In the book of Chronicles, they are there. In the book of Kings, they are there. In Isaiah, they are all through Assyrians, Assyrians. What are the Assyrians of your life? Check and true. It doesn't allow you to have a, a, a breath of fresh air. Today you're okay. The next day you're sick. Today you get a new job. The next day you're losing that job. The next day one child is sick. The other one is not sick. The next day depression is coming. The next day elation is coming. And all those things is all Assyria all over you. Today as we're going to pray, those Assyrians, you will see them no more. In the name of Yeshua, the Lord will pull down. The Lord will destroy. The Lord will take away. The Lord will push them back. In the name of Yeshua. All those things, whether it is in your mind, whether it's in the head, whether it's in the body, whether it's in the environment, or anywhere that been a torment, like the Assyrians to the children of Israel. Today, the Lord will take away every Assyrian in your life, around you, your family, your workplace, in everything you do, in your school, in everywhere. The Lord will take them away in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And Psalm 18, 17, he delivered me from my strong enemy. The Lord will deliver you from every strong enemy that has put so strong knocking on your door every day, tormenting you, chanting on you as if you can't do anything, the Lord will take deliver in the name of Yeshua. Can you trust him this morning? And the Bible says, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Anybody you think is too strong this morning, every situation you think is too strong this morning, every environment you think is too strong this morning, brethren, we're going to put them up to the Lord. He will deliver in the name of Yeshua. Remember, trust him. Remember, believe that he is the deliverer and the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Remember, all power belongs to him. Remember, with him, all things are possible. Remember, he makes the mountain plain. Remember, he fills up every valley. Remember, he makes water in the desert. Remember, he's the only one that can calm the oceans and then the seas of life. Remember, he's the water that can quench every fire in the desert or every wild fire. He's the only water that can quench it. Remember, Remember, there is power in his blood. Remember, at the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, every knee will surely bow. All he asked us to do this morning is ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For he that asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, shall find. He that knocketh, it shall be opened unto you. And he had asked us to pray. Remember, he said, before we even pray, he had had us. He has already answered us. For he knoweth what is in our hearts. What even what we cannot say, our mouth cannot even put them into words. Our Lord had already answered. Finally, Psalm 18, 
48, he delivered, he delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. And we will end this today. And this should be a prayer. Not just asking deliver. Now rejoice at the end of this prayer now that he has delivered. Just like the psalmist is rejoicing. And he has delivered he, he has delivered me. So had the Lord delivered us in the name of Yeshua. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise. We honor you, the most powerful one, the creator of heaven and earth. And everything in it. You created everything for your own pleasure. From the beginning in the book of Genesis chapter 1. The earth was without form of void. And you looked upon it. And you started speaking. Started speaking. Everything came into being through your word. Yes, and Lord. at the end you created us. And you says go and have dominion over all these. All those sin came into the world through the first Adam. Through the second Adam, yes. Lord, righteousness mm -hmm. and deliverance came. That whosoever believeth on that name shall be saved. Saved from the enemies. Saved from elements of nature. Saved from principalities and powers. Rulers of darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Father, Lord, delivered. Because at your name, every knee will surely bow even as they are bowing right now therefore father for everyone listening this morning precious redeemer any assyrian in front of them any principalities and power doing some cruel mockings on them every evil or strong things posing a threat to their life father we pray this morning that they are all brought to plain through the power and authority in the name of yeshua hamashiach in the name of jesus the messiah in that unchallengeable name father today they are brought to naught in the name of jesus father is it in the mind is it in the brain is that is it anywhere is it in the physical body spiritual body is it in the emotional body is it in the psychological body in any realm of life heavenly father we ask that the blood that the passeth all understanding that do it better things that the blood of bulls and rams and the blood of Abel run through every being listening to porch to take away for the lord arise Oh Lord, and let every enemy standing against us be scattered in every way. Lord, give us the grace to believe and to trust that you've done it this morning. That Father, if we don't have to shout, we don't have to cut ourselves like the bow. We only need to speak the word. We only need to do a simple prayer. For even before we pray, you have answered us. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord, for our emotional being is healed. Our psychological being is healed. Lord, thank you, Lord, for every physical being is healed. Lord, thank you for every mountain has been made plain. Every valley, Lord, has been, Lord, brought up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Every river is come. Every ocean is calm in the name of Yeshua. Every wicked person, every wicked principalities or demons, Lord, your authority and your name had made them subject. Father, thank you for delivering us. Thank you, Lord, for this great Lord deliverance. Oh, may your name be exalted. Oh, may your name be magnified. May your name be lifted so high. Be exalted. Be exalted, the mighty one. May your name be glorified. In Yeshua Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. We want to thank the Lord for everyone that, you know, wished me a happy birthday with all the wonderful prayers. And then um, all the one beyond the Lord bless you so much and also give you his life, fullness of his life in you also and to everyone. May the Lord bless us today. Amen. Amen. Amen.